Investigators in Madison County accuse a Richmond man of cruel punishment in an abuse case. We'll tell you about three separate gas leaks that impacted Lexington today. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. Good afternoon. After a beautiful start to the week, rain is about to move back in, and it could be heavy at times tonight and tomorrow. Yeah, a flood watch is already out for much of the area. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is in our First Alert Weather Center with an early look at your forecast. How about it, Chris? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the nice weather coming to a crashing end as heavy rain, rumbles of thunder blowing back in southwest to northeast. I know this is kind of the same old, same old that we've been dealing with for the past several weeks. Let's get into it. Here's the area under the Flood watch for tonight and end of the day on Tuesday. We're seeing Lexington back to Bowling Green along and south of the BG Parkway in most of eastern and southern Kentucky. Though, again, if you're watching us right now from Lawrenceburg up into Scott County, Franklin County, don't let your guard down because I think those rains may try to edge a little farther to the north at some point late tonight and tomorrow. At least the heavier stuff is really going to be uh, pounding parts of central and eastern Kentucky. Live first alert defender now starting to see those raindrops edging in from Shelbyville toward the east now into parts of Anderson County, right on top of the capital city of Frankfort, into Midway and Versailles. A couple of light sprinkles. Most of Lexington AOK -okay. now get into Berea, point south from there. Rains beginning to increase southwest to northeast. Look at that swath of some moderate downpours showing up around the Bowling Green area, and everything that is here is lifting its way on. The Northeast, and we're not just talking about that first surge. Look at the heavy rain spiraling back across sections of Arkansas. All of that taking aim at central and eastern Kentucky as we go into later tonight and tomorrow. So, your flood threat with heavy rains blowing back in. Additional rainfall tonight, tomorrow, one local two, three inch amounts, even some indications a few pockets of higher amounts would be possible. Unfortunately, that could lead to additional flooding problems. We'll tackle that with the updated rainfall forecast from our computer models when I come back in just a few minutes. A year and a half after it disappeared, charges may soon be filed in the theft of 65 cases of rare bourbon from a Frankfurt distillery. Franklin County Sheriff Pat Melton says an indictment is expected soon in the Pappy Van Winkle case. The bourbon valued at $26,000 was stolen from Buffalo Trace in October of 2013. Last month, deputies arrested a man in connection to a bourbon theft from the Wild Turkey Distillery. And at the time, Sheriff Melton said they would investigate to see if there was any connection to the Pappy case. A separate gas leaks caused quite a mess today on the UK campus. A gas leak on Columbia Avenue and Oldham Court forced students to evacuate two residence halls at the same time. A gas leak at Nicholasville Road and Alumni Drive caused some major traffic headaches. WKYT Sam Smith has more on what caused both situations. Yeah, this stretch of Nicholasville Road is back open and drivers are able to make their way back through here. They could not this morning. Around 1115, a construction crew hit a gas line. Nicholasville Road between Waller and Arcadia was shut down. The area was cleared around 2.30 this afternoon, allowing traffic to flow through again. This was not the only gas leak in town today, though. There were two others. One on the UK campus, another on alumni in Nicholasville. We're told both cases were caused by construction crews hitting a line. The Lexington Senior Center evacuated voluntarily for the leak on Nicholasville Road between Waller and Arcadia. The biggest challenge was actually just trying to get them out of the building because most of when they come for the day, they really wanted to participate in their activities. Um, and then there was, uh, of course, with the individuals who do not drive and who are not on our transportation um, uh, list, then we have to rely on wheels and, of course, and have to wait for them to come back and pick up the participants. Now, if you're heading this way, traffic is moving, but it's moving slowly because it appears road work is still going on. In Lexington, Sam Smith, WKYT. Over 200 students were affected by the gas leak on campus. We are learning more about the case against a central Kentucky man accused of torturing a seven year old girl. 23 year old John Wood was arrested Saturday night on Goggins Lane in Richmond. Police say he intentionally abused and tortured the girl from November of last year through this past January. WKYT Sean Moody has the latest. Uh, Madison County Sheriff's deputies said investigators have been working on this case since early January. On Saturday evening, deputies arrested John Wood, charging him with criminal abuse. 
Investigators don't typically release a lot of details in cases involving children like this one. A spokesperson for the Madison County Sheriff's Office said this case began with a domestic call in early January. That's when they started looking into allegations that dated back to November. They haven't gone into detail about exactly what Wood is accused of having done, except to say that it fits the description of cruel punishment. In Wood's arrest warrant, an investigator said Wood abused a seven year old girl. A deputy said their investigation isn't through. We do know that there are some other allegations uh, not involving this case, but against that suspect that we arrested, and some of the stuff that we're doing right now is still ongoing, so uh, there could be other things pending uh, at a later date. And as of late this morning, Madison County District Court had not set a date for Wood's arraignment. In Madison County, Sean Moody, WKYT. Well, Wood declined to give us his side of the story at the Madison County Detention Center. Well, a report of some car break-ins took a dangerous turn today in Franklin County. It all started this morning with several calls to police about thefts in the Kentucky Avenue area. When police were talking to one victim, they saw their stolen car drive by. It led to a chase, a crash, and two teenagers in custody. WKYT's Kristen Kennedy is tracking the crime alert. Frankfurt police say two teens stole items and a car from this neighborhood, and they eventually caught up to them outside city limits. Officers were there taking some reports, and that's when somebody recognized, hey, there goes my vehicle. Frankfurt police major Rob Warfel says his officers started following the SUV owners reported stolen Monday morning. They ended up going down kind of a, a dirt road, if you will. And that's when the officer chose to go ahead and, and activate his emergency equipment. And that's when they sped off into the field and wrecked the car. They stopped it close to a farm field near Louisville Road and say the two male teenagers inside got out and ran away. Sheriff Pat Melton and his deputies helped track them and arrest them. Somebody that we had talked to earlier, uh, he flagged us down and said, I just saw them. They just ducked down in that ditch by a tree line on Louisville Road. Uh, deputies, myself and two deputies that were back walking the other field. Uh, they jumped in with me. We came down. He flagged us down, pointed out. We went straight to him. They're charging both teens with possession of burglary tools and receiving stolen property. In Frankfurt, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Police say they will not release the teens' names because they are juveniles and are not being charged as adults. The search continues for a man accused of shooting two people at a Boyle County club. Our county by county coverage begins in Boyle County. Police say that 24 year old Darwin Cloyd shot two people early Saturday morning at the Den in Danville. Both victims were taken to UK hospital to be treated for multiple gunshot wounds. Their conditions are not known at this time. In Campbell County, jury selection has begun in the trial of a Lexington woman charged in the murder of her boyfriend. Shayna Hubers has been in jail since Highland Heights police arrested her in October of 2012. Officers found her boyfriend, Ryan Poston, shot six times inside his home. Hubers told police she shot the 29 year old attorney in self defense. The Campbell County judge presiding over the case says he expects the trial to last about two weeks. And in Morgan County, a man is facing charges after a woman claims he offered her drugs for sex. According to the warrant issued by Kentucky State Police, Rodney Keaton shoved the woman against a car and then tried to put his hand down her shirt. Police say the woman then claims Keaton offered her drugs to have sex with him. Keaton is charged with assault, attempted sexual abuse, and solicitation of prostitution. There are more candidates joining the crowded race for the White House. The first nominating contest isn't until early next year, and those who have announced, including Hillary Clinton, are focusing now on Iowa and New Hampshire, the first two states where votes will be cast. Greg Boswell is at the White House with more. Hillary Clinton is in a van nicknamed Scooby, headed from her home in the New York suburbs to her first campaign event in Iowa. The road trip where she's meeting voters was her idea, after officially jumping into the race with this video. I'm running for president. Clinton's campaign strategists say they are taking nothing for granted. The White House press secretary placed President Obama's support in that category. Uh, there are other people who uh, are friends of the president who may at some point decide to get into the race. Clinton is focusing on smaller events and one on one time with voters, a change from her 2008 campaign with large public gatherings and sweeping speeches. Clinton's first big rally isn't expected until next month. 
By then, several more potential Republican opponents are also expected to be on the road to the White House. Thank you. Florida Senator Marco Rubio adds his name much. to the official GOP field with an evening announcement in Miami. The 43-year-old confirmed his candidacy in a call with donors, taking a jab at Clinton and saying the election should be about the future, not the past. Rubio joins two other senators, Ted Cruz of Texas and Rand Paul of Kentucky, already in the race. Other big names are expected soon, including fellow Floridian Jeb Bush. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. Rubio's announcement will have an impact on the race to control the Senate as well. He's up for re-election in the Senate, but Florida law prohibits people from running for both seats at the same time. That means both parties will pour a lot of money into the race to fill his open seats. It was back to work today for Congress following a two-week recess. Lawmakers are preparing for fierce debate over how to control Iran's nuclear program. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee is planning to take up a bill that would require the president to give Congress a voice in any nuclear deal with Tehran. The president has threatened to veto the legislation. Jody Arias will be spending the rest of her life in prison. A judge sentenced her today for the 2008 murder of her ex-boyfriend, Travis Alexander. Arias was found guilty of first-degree murder in 2013. Two juries were deadlocked on whether to sentence Arias to life in prison or death. Due to the deadlocks, the death penalty was off the table. Before her sentencing, Arias said she was truly disgusted and repulsed with herself for what she did.